What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you guys today's video. We are talking about Drag Bat. This strategy, underused for sure. It was popular for a long time, but it's very, very strong at this point in the game right now. Um, my last video was also about the Bat spell at Town Hall 12, but this is at every Town Hall level. Town Hall 10, 11, and 12, all the main Town Hall levels we see in Clan Wars. Um, I need to uh, put this video out because um, and this is surprising for someone like me, I'm a big fan of breaking down a base, base identification, choosing the right army for the base, um, and you know, that's true, but at Town Hall 10, I don't even, I just use Drag Bat at this point. This is the only strategy I use at Town Hall 10, even if I only am choosing from a few bases, because it works so much. Um, now you do want to change it up, we're going to talk in this video how you should change it up, how you should plan it, um, but you can make it work on a lot of different bases. Uh, so really at Town Hall 10, it's definitely going to be easiest because all it comes down to Drag Bat is the Bat Spell and the Air Targeting Splash, which is Wizard Towers and Multi-Infernos. At Town Hall 10, you only have four Wizard Towers, two Infernos. Um, that makes it a lot easier because you have these various tools at your disposal. And we'll take a look at a few Town Hall 10 replays, a few Town Hall 11 replays, and a few t in one Town Hall 12 replay. Um, but you can see, just crush this base right here. I'm going to switch gears, take a look at um, one more from this war. Uh, another Town Hall 10 replay next. And I want to kind of break down the bases because there's a there's somewhat of a formula to it. Um, go to number 43 here. Uh, I've been having a crazy high hit rate at Town Hall 10. I think I've, I'm like 7 for 8 in the last few wars with this strategy. So really um, what it comes down to, and let me pause for just a moment to make my point, not too long. Um, like I said, it's all about the wizard towers and the multi-infernos. Basically you have some tools. Um, you can do a bat wave or you can deploy your bats directly on one of those said buildings uh, with a free spell in order to take it out right away and have the bats spread out from there. Uh, but that aside, you're able to neutralize other splash damage in the area using uh, a freeze, but also the Stone Slammer is going to be a huge help. The Stone Slammer is very strong, um, especially at Town Hall 10. It has those balloons inside of it, and you can use that to neutralize a Wizard Tower, uh, if not more, value in the area. So really, when you're looking at a base, you should look at what side can I use bats on. For this base, we have both multis kind of relatively up towards the top there. The back end is definitely a little bit lighter here um, and the wizard towers are also kind of up towards the top by those multis. Now another th important thing, when you're creating the funnel for your dragons, because you have to decide, okay, the dragons are going to roughly be the opposite side of where the bats are deployed, it's important to make sure your heroes are not going to lure out the clan castle if it's a lava hound, if it's Valks, that kind of stuff, especially Lava Hound, you don't want it to come out because it's just going to be a nuisance for your dragons. So what you do is you use your heroes making sure the CC will not be pulled uh, as your heroes create the funnel. Uh, dragons in the middle, one to two rages, and a Lava Hound, if the, if the air defense is somewhat deep uh, in the base or if there's multiple air defenses, you definitely want to use a Lava Hound. It's almost always going to be worth it. Um, most of the time you don't use a Lava Hound, it's just if there's no air defenses on that side of the base. We got the uh, this multi. Uh, once the top one went down, I began deploying the bats. We have uh, this multi being tanked by the wizard tower. This multi, a bit of an issue, but it's going to be tanked by the dragons partially, and we have three free spells uh, to use as needed here. So you can see, as the bats move through, I'm going to protect the big group of bats. That's what you should be doing. Um, we're going to start freezing stuff right here. Uh, two freezes down. Lost quite a few bats, could have been slightly earlier on these freezes, and that last freeze was good. You, you're able to get that freeze if the uh, Inferno and Wizard Tower are like have that two tile plus the wall, so a three tile gap and a little bit of offset. Um, you can study this replay as an example. You're able to make that freeze spell if you drop it in the right place. So keep that in mind. Apologies for not zooming in more. I know that's been an issue in the past, but trying to keep a big picture here as we talk about uh, the basics of this strategy. So. Town Hall 10, um, fairly straightforward, just to summarize real quick as we move along here. Um, heroes for the funnel, preferably not luring the CC. If you need to, use both heroes on one side and use a baby dragon or maybe some balloons even or some kind of air troop to funnel the other side. Sometimes you don't even need much of a funnel. Um, actually, you know what? I might just show one more, well, 
I'll go ahead and go to Town Hall 11. I think the upper Town Hall levels need more attention. I don't want to beat Town Hall 10 too dead here. Um, so let me move on to, let's see, what base is it? Number 32. Um, but yeah, keep in mind, uh, some of the biggest takeaways are using the Stone Slammer, not just with the dragons, but use it on the back end to take out a Wizard Tower or at least tank it. Um, you can also use Giants if the Wizard Towers are completely exposed, but um, typically, because there's less of those Wizard Towers Infernos, you're not going to have as much of a problem. Um, just send the dragons at whatever side has most of that, Wizard Towers and Infernos, um, which I'll be just calling splash damage here on out to make it simpler. Send your dragons on that side with a Lava Hound if there's air defenses. Air defenses are really not much of an issue. They should not dictate how you do the attack, uh, which is ironic because it's an air attack. You'd think air defenses matter, but they don't as much. Um, anyway, that's Town Hall 10. If you uh, want more info, you can drop something in the comments or uh, always feel free to check out my Patreon, get some Discord perks. You can get advice on your bases before you attack them, base feedback. I digress. So. Taking a look at this next base before things move in too much, uh, encountering a multi-inferno first, also the queen was supposed to get that wizard tower, things didn't quite go as planned, but it's okay, I had a lava hound which was supposed to tank this air defense, uh, because that air defense was still up, the queen didn't, it would have been a great funnel if the queen took this stuff out, because they would just come straight through, so not ideal, but th this shows it can still work. On the back end, you know, town hall 11, you have another wizard tower. So there's going to be a little bit trickier to make sure everything's accounted for. Um, but big thing here is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, drop the bats here and then use uh, ice golems, freezes, actually no ice golems. You can use ice golems, not in this attack. We'll see that later. Um, but I'm going to use my stone slammer to tank. I'm also going to use freeze spells. So you have the ice golem is an additional tool at Town Hall 11. Um, so when we think about neutralizing, sorry to pause one more time. Won't well, Try not to pause too much. But when we talk about neutralizing stuff at Town Hall 11 on the back end, um, you have a bunch of tools. You have the freeze spell, which can be used for direct deployment or freezing as the bats move through in a wave. Uh, this is the direct deployment case right there. You have uh, the stone slammer, which can be used to tank wizard towers or even go for an inferno if it's that exposed. And you have ice golems and or giants, which can be used to tank wizard towers as well. So we uh, went ahead and deployed on top of the Inferno. A uh, little bit risky there, no rage. Uh, so the bats started to die because the Inferno woke up, but just got it down quick enough. Um, then I, I used a few loons. That's even another thing. I mean, I'm just all over the place. There's so many options. Um, sometimes because of the pathing in the walls, people are going to uh, defensively try to make it difficult for you uh, to use ice golems to tank their wizard towers because base building is getting better. Um, and by the way, you should always try to use mortars and whatnot on the outside to avoid people using ice golems to tank your wizard towers. But as you saw there, um, a few balloons to kind of go directly at that wizard tower because oftentimes the air pathing is still there directly into the wizard tower. Um, so that's what I did. You know, whatever it takes to kind of get that tanking done, it's definitely worth the, the uh, troop space investment because those bats can clear out so many defenses if they don't have to encounter wizard towers or multi infernos. So anyway, moving quite uh, quickly here, but um, we're going to hop to a different war just because unfortunately I do not have another Town Hall 11 replay to show, so let me switch over. Um, just only one attack from this war, which uh, probably the best war I've had in a long time. Uh, 6 for 6, Town Hall 10, 2 triples, Town Hall 11, 2 triples, Town Hall 12, 2 triples, all fresh. Um, unfortunately we still lost the war, but... Uh, a good individual performance for me, nonetheless. Uh, moving along here, so this one was an interesting attack. Uh, right away, looking at the base, Wizard Tower touching the uh, Multi-Inferno, that's a great sign. Hey, use the uh, direct deployment bat spell. Two defenses, gonna have to use the Rage to make sure the freeze lasts long enough for the bats to take everything out. So we're gonna do a Rage Freeze Bat on the back end, but how else are we gonna tank these Wizard Towers? Well, over here, I decided to use my Stone Slammer to neutralize that Wizard Tower. Um, and then I decide dragons go directly this way through this multi. And I'm going to use like a Delayed Heroes right here to kind of clean up this side of the base um, and help funnel the dragons deeper in. So you'll see what I mean. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, great value from this E-Dragon. Uh, lots of touching buildings. Thinking about using my heroes there, but there was a good chance they'd pull the CC if they got too deep. And also, um, it just 
wasn't the best place to deploy them initially. I wanted to wait and make sure that they didn't die too early because you want things roughly up at the same time, moving through at the same pace, similar to a minor attack perhaps. So here we go. Um, notice I'm going to use the Lava Hound to tank this air defense, otherwise the Slammer is going to have a really tough time. Uh, patrol test the pops, that made things a little tricky uh, for the Slammer, but things keep moving through. We got the Warden and the Rage. Be patient on that Rage, be patient on the Warden. Your dragons are pretty tanky, they'll last a little while, so don't be too early, but also, you know, do it while most of your dragons are still alive. Uh, so anyway, Rage, Freeze, Bats, once again the Freeze was close, sometimes you want to bring a Max Freeze spell in your uh, uh, CC to ensure that you get the uh, long enough freeze. And I got the area taken out. Now the bats do start to peter out. I think they hit a few uh, defenses that made it so they started to die. But there's they cleared out the entire back end, which is what I needed from them. And then the delayed heroes are really what you know made this attack work. Because if you noticed, I dropped them at the bottom here and they just kind of started to swing on up around. So this is kind of a, um, a technical type attack and I wouldn't recommend the delayed heroes for most attacks, it just happened to work on this base very well. Um, so only use it if you don't need them for the funnel as much or if you can have kind of the funnel happen as the dragons move through, which should already be happening anyway to some extent, but this is very much a delayed hero attack. Um, anyway, one more at Town Hall 12 and guys I have to say Town Hall 10, Town Hall 11. Um, those are the, I only use drag bat now, so um, I don't even have anything else trained. I usually don't even consider anything else. The only thing is maybe at Town Hall 11 I might use uh, a P.E.K.K.A. bow bat or something. Uh, or if a base really calls for something, if it calls for hogs, maybe. But typically I'm choosing from, you know, five, ten different bases I can hit. And I'm just going to take the easy one, which is the one that I can hit with drag bat. Um, not everyone will have that luxury who's watching this video, but uh, if you do have some bases to choose from, you know, there's definitely bases that won't be good candidates for this, but you can really adapt this. I'm not going to say force because it's adapting. It's changing the army composition slightly. You know, are you using balloons, ice golems, uh, stone slammer? How are you doing with all these wizard towers? How are you approaching the base, the funnels, using e-dragons, using heroes? You know, it's something that takes practice, but you're, you're seeing all the basics here and all the different options you have here for how to go about uh, executing this type of attack. Okay, um, am I talking too fast? Moving along, this is Town Hall 12, and Town Hall 12 really takes a lot of uh, skill and a lot of um, just base identification to get this to work here because you have that third multi inferno plus all five of those wizard towers, a ton of splash damage. Uh, on this base, the pathing was good. It's a very skinny base, so everything moves through here. Um, basically, getting like three wizard towers plus a multi taken out right away. Then on the back end, we have these two multis and two wizard towers and the town hall. I'm coming opposite the town hall. Uh, more on that in a minute, but you'll see I have a plan for pretty much each of these buildings. First one, we have the stone slammer. Good timing on the pause there. Uh, stone slammer coming in for this inferno. That'll get one of them. Meanwhile, using the Warden's ability to keep those dragons up. Here we have the Ice Golem uh, freeze. And then fortunately, the plan was for the Slammer to go tank this next Wizard Tower next. And that is what happens. I was probably a little early on the bats, but it's going to be close. This Wizard Tower is going to lock onto the balloons pretty quickly. So that works out okay. Could have been a little bit deadly there. Now also, a Lava Hound is going to be lured out by this Ice Golem. Didn't even think about that, but... Um, fortunately it's not catastrophic. Uh, so the wizard tower gets like one shot on the bat to retarget the balloons, which is good. I have another freeze for the town hall and the wizard tower here to continue to keep it frozen after the ice golem wears off. A little bit early on that freeze, but it's okay. Um, the town hall is going to like kill all my bats, so really this rage should have been farther over. That's one thing to think about guys, and you'll see I'll still get the triple anyway because I have balloons and dragons left up. And it gets very close, but the Warden helps, and a um, little bit of luck. Um, these dragons are going to come attack the Lava Hound. You'll see how things play out. It's not really anything in my control anymore. But that's one last piece of advice I want to give you guys as we wrap up today's video. Um, when you're dropping the, when you're doing the direct deployment, and by that I mean dropping the bats directly on top of an Inferno Tower or a Wizard Tower with a Freeze spell, and you're going to use a rage, which is often a good idea um, for them to 
take out that section quicker if there's a bunch of buildings, if there's multiple splash, you know, stuff like that. Drop the rage, not necessarily right in the same place you drop your bat spells and your freeze spell. Drop it so it covers all of those high HP defenses. Because oftentimes, um, and this attack's a good example, the town hall was pretty important because the bats were going to target it and I wanted it to, I want those bats to be under rage as they attack the town hall. So this is where the inferno was right here and dropping the rage there made it so it didn't cover the town hall. If I drop my rage on this building, the bats are still raged initially um, and that way it covers the town hall. Now it won't reach out to these buildings as much but there's not many defenses out there and they're much lower in hit points. So be conscious of where you drop that Rage spell if you choose to do that type of a deployment. Uh, but we have a very low Warden, a single Balloon, and a single Minion finishing off this base and calling it a video. So that's it guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And um, look forward to putting some more content out soon. Till then, uh, check out my Patreon if you want you know, the full ta attacking advice. I'll be checking that more now that I'm settled into a new location. So attacking advice, uh, war bases each month, and also defensive feedback on your own bases. All that good stuff. The link is always in the description. But besides that, see you guys next time. Bisectatron out.